Welcome back to the Mississippi Kidney Foundation Kidney Cares Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Mayfield, the executive director here at the Mississippi Kidney Foundation. Thank you for tuning in to every episode that we've had of this podcast. Uh, thank you once again to Alliant Health Solutions for sponsoring this great work that we're doing with the Mississippi Kidney Foundation. Thank you to our board at the Mississippi Kidney Foundation, our producers, and everybody who tunes in every single episode. Now we want to introduce our special guest for this episode, um, a guy I met a little bit more than a year ago. And I think from that point forward, we've had a connection uh, because we share so many similarities in our uh, walk with kidney disease. Uh, we'll bring him in now, uh, Minister Michael Miner. Man, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely, man. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Well, Mike, we, we got so much to get to. Um, you know, you got a new book out. I know, you know, last time we talked, that was something you had in the works at that time, a little yes. bit more than a year ago. Um, um, so first of all, how's it been going, man? Man, it's been going, it's been going fabulous. It's been going fabulous. Um, ever since that time, you know, it's, it's like we were sharing, you know, right before this podcast, man, how, uh, you know, like what a difference a year makes, you know, yeah. so much has, has changed and, um, but, uh, everything is still, is still trucking. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still well, trucking along. I, I just want to go back. You know, we spent a long time before we came on the air talking about your career and being a minister of music. And, you know, we talked about religion and faith and what it's meant to you. And of course we're going to talk about your, uh, your battle with kidney failure and everything, but yes, I just want you to go back and you know talk about what it means to you to be a minister of music and how um, it has impacted you for so many years and even while you were going through. Um, why why is it so important to you what you do? Yes, um, well let me let me just let me just take it back to like the uh, to the beginning to the you know to the time when I didn't even realize what God was doing uh, with me. You know, I had a, I always had a passion for music. And, man, I was, I was just blessed to be able to grow up um, in a singing family. Uh, I tell people all the time I was blessed to grow up in a church where um, there were, like, three solid parts, like soprano, alto, tenor. It was, it was, I grew up hearing good singing, um, and so that kind of gave me my appetite or my flavor for um, uh, gospel music, uh, for quality gospel music, and, uh, you know, and I, and they, I came up, uh, was given the opportunity to um, teach music, um, my minister of music growing up, Mr. Carol Washington from Starkville, Mississippi, um, he recognized early on, because I used to come to rehearsal, you know, the uh, Can Spirits had a song, yeah. and Mama Drug Me to Church. <laughs> yeah. That was my situation. So, my, you know, my mother drug me to every choir rehearsal. <laughs> and so I just came up in that, in, you know, came up in that environment. And uh, my minister of music recognized at a, as a teenager, uh, I could pick and play a little bit. I could hear a little bit. And he started giving me, um, I'm about to date myself, but he started giving me these cassette tapes. <laughs> and uh, he said, look, I, 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 I want you to learn this and teach it to us next week. And I was like, okay. So I go home, you know, I was excited though. I went home and learned that song, listened to the three parts, started teaching, not knowing that would put me on the road to where that's what I ended up doing as a profession. Um, I've been a music, uh, uh, I've been a minister of music for like over, uh, over about 30 years. Mm. Um, uh, I did it full time. Um, for about 25 years, maybe. Um, I was ministering music at a church in Hattiesburg, West Point Church, uh, West Point Baptist Church from 
2020. I yeah. left. I I moved back to this area in 2020. I remarried and moved back to the Jackson area in 2020. So um, that afforded me those little young years and that experience afforded me the opportunity to do this, you know, for a living. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that because uh, it's 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 what I naturally do. And uh, I tell people all the time, it's like when I was a minister, when I when I worked as a minister of music full time, it was like getting paid for something yeah. that I enjoy. You know, right. I, and I look forward to going to work every day and doing it. So, uh, yeah, and, it, it, and, and being in that environment of faith and hearing all those sermons and all those Bible studies and having to to uh, study and 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 feed a group of people who were in my ministry who I had to who I had the pleasure of leading, uh, that gave me um, strength that I didn't realize I was going to need so mm. greatly. Right. You know, um, and you know, around this, around 2012, yeah, I think it was 2012, uh, my kidneys failed, my kidneys started failing. And so that journey right there, all of this stuff prior, mm -hmm. I know God was setting me up right. to strengthen me so that I'd be able to go through that. Uh, situation well you know let's talk about it you know we call this podcast a kidney cares podcast mm -hmm. and one of the reasons i wanted to name it that is because you know far often we don't talk about kidneys until they fail right and we we don't have a lot of conversations about kidney failure and kidney disease and for so many people it becomes a you know a shock or right you know a scary thing when we hear dialysis or we hear kidney failure. You know, I've heard this story before, but take me back to that day, that moment where you found out you had kidney failure and take us through the emotion that you felt when you, when you got that news. Well, that, that moment um, was, um, I remember it was on a Sunday and I had to come to Jackson to do a uh, rehearsal uh, with a church. Well, not with a church, with a convention. Um, and I came and I, I went back home home afterwards. And um, I, it was, I found it so hard to breathe. I was, I was, I was laying down, I didn't realize what was wrong. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I really didn't realize that uh, that I was full of fluid. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, because I was busy doing everything I was doing, but I, it was literally like I, I couldn't. It was it was really hard to breathe, so much so that I had to go to the uh, emergency room, and that's when uh, I found out that um, I had. I can't remember the percentage now, but it was, uh, it was I my kidney function was already. Uh, below 50%. Like, it was already low. And uh, that's when they started telling me stuff about, you know, I could possibly need dialysis and all this kind of stuff. And just out of the, you know, hearing that out of the blue. Now, let me, let me just share this. I had a younger brother, Jason, who had gone through kidney failure and uh, dialysis and stuff like that. So I was kind of familiar with what they were saying, uh, but still shocked to mm -hmm. hear it about me, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, you know, they started telling me that, and then I, I was like, man, like, oh, I, you know, I don't have time to go through this. I got, I got stuff to do, right. I got things right. to do. And, you know, kidney failure doesn't care what you have to do. It's, it's yeah. just, you know, it's just going to be there, you know, so you have to deal with it. And uh, it was a challenge dealing with it, and especially mentally, because I just did not know. Uh, I think, like I shared with you uh, last year, I was I was clinically depressed and had no idea. Right. You know, because I had a picture of of depression, like you know, staying in a dark room and not 
opening the blinds. And, but that wasn't my picture. I was going out functioning. I was still singing, uh, you know, still ministering to people, and um, but carrying this mental load and physical load uh, after, you know, after I it, it, in, indeed encountered, uh, you know, after I had to go to Dallas and stuff like that. Uh, well, that was a process, too, because I started out on Peritoneal. Correct. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, and, but I ended up having to go to the Dallas, to have hemodialysis, which is Dallas is at the uh, Dallas's clinic. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was just all of that. And, you know, uh, I, I was able to, to write about a lot of it. That, that, was, that was therapy in a sense. Uh, but I also, you know, went and sought therapy. Yeah. I went and got counseling because, and that really helped. Oh, my God. Well, you know, you and I talked a lot about it before we came um, onto air to do mm -hmm. the podcast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've seen for so many years, so many people go to church and they, they lay all their problems and, they, they, you know, they you know, worship God and say, you know, God's going to take care of it. But dialysis is not one of those things where you're just going to, I hate to say it, you're not going to pray it away. You have to go get your dialysis. And you, once kidney failure hits, there is no reversing it. You either have to do dialysis or you have to get a transplant. So for you to be a minister of music and go to church as much as you do, I mean, yeah. you, know, you said your mom had to take you and drag you to church growing up, but now it became your profession. Right. What was it like to go into the church and to continue to sing, but deep down have that depression and know like, man, how did I end up here? I never done anything wrong with anybody. How, how did that happen to me? What What were those moments like? Yeah. Um, that was what I characterized as that private struggle. You yeah. know, the, the uh, you know, the kind of thing where you, um, where you want to appear like everything is all right. You want, you want, you know, you want to appear strong, you know, but you have questions like, like, dang, like, this is this is really happening. This is really happening to me, and um, um, you know it was it was it was tough. But having a support system was was really 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 to my benefit. Uh, that's really really important. And um, you know my faith to believe and understand. Um, that God was walking with me through my situation and that he was using it to help develop character and stuff in me. Uh, it was making me reach down and grab hold of things that I didn't really have to at first. You know, it's the kind of thing where you, 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 you sing about certain things, mm -hmm. um, and it's easy to sing about them until you really have you to know. practice them. You yeah. really have to yeah. go, you know, you really have to go and, and practice what you preach, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, practice what you sing. And, uh, you know, that was a growth process uh, where I really learned more about God and who he was and how he was operating in my life. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, Extremely difficult, but um, extremely rewarding at the same time to right. to see how um, he brought me through it, to, to see how uh, it changed me in such a way to help me um, understand and have empathy for, for others. And, you know, not just kidney failure, but just others who were going through their various situations, whether it be health um, or, you know, whatever it was, it has helped me to, to roll my sleeves up and go into battle with them also mm -hmm. because I was believing God for me too. Yeah. All right. We're with Michael Miner here, the author of Uprooted, and of course we'll talk about that a little bit later, but... You know, hearing your story and, you know, we talked about the similarities we have of doing peritoneal dialysis and yeah. 
Um, just talk about some of those moments that you sit back and think like, wow, I actually overcame that while doing peritoneal because I know, you know, like I said, I've been through it. There were some moments where you saw the medicine and uh, some of the other things that you probably dealt with. I had peritonitis a couple of times. Not sure if I you did. did. Too. But too. those moments, talk about what it was like to go through those difficult moments and, like you said, to try to deal with it in, in, in secrecy or privacy, okay. but yeah. knowing at certain times you couldn't hide it. So for context to help people understand what peritoneal dialysis is, <clears throat> it's dialysis when they use fluid. I think the fluid is called dextrose, yeah. I think. But it's, it's basically uh, sugar water. Correct. And so... It, it's 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 fluids that fill your peritoneum cavity that draw other fluids that you know that draw the salt. I might I might be messing it up, but it but it it, it draws fluid into your peritoneum cavity, mm -hmm. and then your your drains it out. Your, then it drains it out. Right. Well, that fluid comes in boxes. I think it was what two two bags in a box. It was two yeah. bags in a box, and so, and so I'm 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 trying to paint a picture of of my mental state. Um, if this, I mean that that first time I don't know about you, but the first time they brought medicine to my house, we didn't have anywhere to put it. It was so much medicine, so many boxes that we yeah. literally had four or five rooms stacked to the ceiling. Yes. Of, that's of my medicine. That's what I was trying to to describe. Like you picture a wall with box filled with boxes of, of medicine just stacked up and seeing that every day yeah. and understanding I need that to live like yeah. that. And it, it's and and it's so um what's the word? Um I can't find the right word. But it's so it's so demonstrative of what the the kidney disease is doing, because those 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 boxes took over the house. Yeah. Kind of like the dialysis is taking over your life. It's taking over your life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it it was. I mean, it was. Man, it was. It was. It was such a mental toll. Like thinking back on it. Yeah. Wow. I'm just. Yeah. I'm just trying to think back to how, um, man. I, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, and I can relate, you know, we talked about this because that was the first time in my life where I felt the impact of dialysis because you and I both know they pull up to your house in the 18 wheel. 18 wheel. And you're looking at them like, they start what is this? You <laughs> loading the pallet of boxes of, of, of those bags of fluid yeah. and in your house and you got to figure out where you're going to put them and all that kind of stuff. Um, um, i tell you something I, I, I probably, well, I, I can say it now because it's, it's, it's too late for me to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I rented a storage bin yeah. to store those boxes because I didn't have any room. I, I kept them uh, in a storage bin, which I wasn't supposed to, but I went and got the box. You know, I went and got a certain amount of, well, my kids went and got a certain amount of box. And so that was their routine, which which was affecting their life, too. You know, they're just, you know, they're seeing their dad have to do. And then to, to fast forward, um, I did that for, like, about two years, and still went into fluid overload because for some reason peritoneal dialysis wasn't really working for me. It, it wasn't cleaning, it wasn't clearing out enough fluid. It was no, it wasn't clearing out enough toxins and poisons. Mm -hmm. So I was still sick and getting, you know, getting sick. Like you said, I went through peritonitis a couple of times, but that's for for something different. But yeah. I ended up going through. Prayer tonight is ain't no fun either. No, that's no joke. That's it's a pain that. That is no joke. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then my second time was worse than the first time. Yeah. 
and uh, I, you know, and then you know, I'm thinking, well, I've I've gone through this before. The second time, man, the the, the doctor, they uh they put a camera down my throat mm -hmm. and looked into my looked down at my stomach, and 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 the doctor basically said, like, this is everything down here is just raw. I remember you said that. It's yeah. just like it's just. It's it's infected. It's raw. It's mm -hmm. and you know going through the um, which forced me to go on the other type of dialysis uh, that I was really dreading because I had to take time off work and go th you know three days a week and that and and, and mentally I, you know that that was bothering me too. So it was just it's just yeah I can't even find the words now. To, yeah. to describe what, how heavy that was then, um, but uh, I knew I got to keep doing it because I got I got people who depend on me, you know, mm -hmm. and so that kind of helped me to get through. And then I had people praying, man, and like uh, just I, it, that's the that's the God factor. Uh, people who love you, who support you, who were constantly letting you know, you know, I'm praying for you. You know, you, do you need anything? And people stepping up, and so I could see God's hand. Like a lot of times, people don't recognize God because they they picture it being a certain way, mm -hmm. but God works through through people. Mm -hmm. And so I could see God's hand moving throughout my life, the, the, you know, the, the, the way people were just stepping up and just helping out, uh, helping out with, you know, with, you know, with, with my family when something was lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, people were just there. And so, yeah. Yeah. And the one thing I tell people, you know, you talk about your family, you talk about your support system. Dialysis is one of those things where you find out who's really with you and you find out who ain't with you. And I think listening to your story, you know, what you went through, talking about your support system, your sons, and how they went and got your medicine, and, you know, it, it's one of those things where you can't fight it alone. No. You no. need some people that they're going to be there for you, whether they're just praying for you, to love on you. Whether it's something you know for a fact. You can't do it by yourself no. when doing dialysis. No, no, no. That's going to be a losing battle. I can, I can. Trust me, <laughs> just, 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 yeah. You, that's not a solo type deal. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen people try to do it, and uh, and I dare say most of those people that I saw try to do it couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. they didn't. They literally didn't make it. Yeah. So, Mike, you find out you go through kidney failure. You're still singing and everything, and then you get on hemodialysis. Um, how long were you? And I know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you tell the best part of the story when you got your kidney, because that mm -hmm. that story is amazing. But how long were you on dialysis before you got your kidney? I was on dialysis for three years total. I was on, um, I did hemodialysis for two years. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I did peritoneal dialysis at home mm -hmm. for two years. Then I was forced because of a bad bout with peritonitis. Mm -hmm. They had to take my port out. Yeah. And and and, and so when I, when I got on hemodialysis, which I was I was really dreading. I you know, I was trying to avoid. And when I got on hemodialysis, I started feeling better. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. I think I want to keep, you know, I, I just mm -hmm. want to keep doing this because I can I can get up out of bed almost normally mm -hmm. now, whereas I couldn't do it before. I was just so weak. I was so, it was like always something wrong. I was mm -hmm. in the hospital. This is... This is no exaggeration. I was admitted in the hospital. In those two years that I was on peritoneal dialysis, pr 
probably not a, a total of 15 to 16 months, but out of out of 24 months that make up two years, mm -hmm. I was in the hospital at some point, probably for about 15 of those months. I was just in and out. In and out. In and out. I was in the I mean, I, I was I was in the hospital so much. Um, and if you know anything about staying in the hospital, hospitals weaken you physically. Because you know you're you're there you're lying in a, yeah. in a bed. Yeah. You're not yeah. moving, you're not and so and I still experience some of that weakness now um, that I'm trying to get back, uh, you know, trying to get my strength back. And so, um, and I mean, that was, that was, yeah, I got my kidney in 2015. So yeah. that was, and I'm still feeling the effects. Um, but, um, but man, yeah, it's. What, what caused your kidney failure? My kidney failure was caused by uh, long-term, um, uncontrolled diabetes. Mm -hmm. And when I say uncontrolled, um, early on, no, I, had, I had diabetes. I got diabetes when I was, what, 20, 24. So I was... I was an adult, but I was just really young and, um, you know, felt like I could handle it. And I did not make the changes that mm -hmm. needed to have been made at that time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I felt young and mm -hmm. um, a term I used to hear my grandmama say, <laughs> I, I felt young and spry. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 you know, when, 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 when when the doctor told me I was a diabetic, well, I felt like I felt last week, and mm -hmm. I you know when I didn't know I was a diabetic, so mm -hmm. I didn't change anything. That's a mistake. Yeah. But uh, and so after long term non compliance, it, it it just caught up with me. Yeah. You know diabetes and then hypertension, both. That, that's a, that's 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 a bad combination. Yeah. And yeah. so both of those played a part in my And, of course, those failure. are the two leading causes of kidney failure. Yeah, and I have both of them. And that's something we want to prevent, especially here in a state like Mississippi where, you know, there's normal to see people with, you know, uncontrolled diabetes and hypertension. Uh, but, you know, we want to have a conversation to prevent people from going exactly. what you and I went exactly. through. But, Mike, I, I, I'm just so excited because every time you tell this story, I get – I feel good inside when you the day you got your kidneys. So I'll just let you go through it. I know it's not a, a long story, but it has layers to it. So I just want you to tell the audience, when you got your kidney, uh, how did that happen? Gotcha. So uh, I, I smile every time I, I tell the story. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I was registered uh, at, uh, what's the one in Alabama? Oh, UAB. I was I was registered first at UAB, mm -hmm. and then I was registered at Tulane. All right. Um, and, at, and at Tulane, I was actually I had gotten worked up for a kidney as well as a pancreas mm. transplant, so that if you know that would take care of my diabetes, diabetes too. Right. Uh, US UMC was the last place that I registered, but at, at UMC had the Shortest list, if you will, the shortest list, if you, the shortest wait, right? If you will, um, but anyway, I was um, that day. I was tailgating uh, with a friend of mine, uh, <laughs> Dwayne Brown. Uh, Dwayne and I were in an RV, mm -hmm. um, and we were going to Mississippi State LSU football game. Dwayne was a former. MSU football player. Um, he played football at, at the MSU with my brother. He was a teammate with my older brother. But anyway, we you know every year we would we would pick one game and try to go to, and so we you know we went. So I, so I'm on an RV. I got you know we got barbecue, we got food, we mm -hmm. we, we you know we're ready to go. And so 
um, I'm uh, in Starkville, and uh, there's a young man at our church. His name is Kendrick Murray. Kendrick uh, had an accident, and we had been praying for Kendrick like all week long. Um, his his mom uh, was was at was was at was at the service. Pastor stopped the service and called her up. We we prayed for him that Sunday. Well, now this is the Saturday after that Sunday. Mm -hmm. On the way to Starkville, I get news that Kendrick has, has passed, right. and I go like, "Dang, we've been praying yeah. for Kendrick." Yeah. So get to Starkville. And um, I'm at the game, and my phone is ringing. And I have to be careful when I when I when I tell the story. I I don't want to come off as insensitive, yeah. but I was at the game, and I was thinking, okay, this is um, how did I know? Oh, I knew it was. Uh, Kendrick's mom, Adrian, Cauley, um, and um, I said within myself, she's probably calling about the arrangements. Correct. Correct. And so I'm gonna call her back after this game because you know it's loud and stuff mm -hmm. and all this, all this good stuff. So, and you know I get a couple of calls uh, from her. Then I end up getting a call from my pastor. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking like, wait, something might be going on. I need to find out what's, what's, what's happening at church, you know, because my pastor is my boss. Mm -hmm. So of course, answer this call. He says, Mike, agents have been trying to get in church with you. Um, she's been calling you because she's trying to give Kendra's kidney to you because Kendrick was a was a donor, mm -hmm. was an organ donor. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, that's cool. That's not how that works, but okay. I didn't know anything about a uh, designated donor. Mm -hmm. You know, I, j I just didn't know. I thought that that's that's a nice gesture, but he has to be tested and mm -hmm. we, we have to match and all that. Well, she's calling me to get my my information so mm -hmm. they can match, so right. they can test his right. kidney with, with my kidney. And so I call her back after after the game. I call her back, give her the information she needs. And um, I still just think, like, oh, you know, it's, this is a long shot. And so I had, I had practiced not getting myself too high mm -hmm. because – I didn't want to be let down. Right. So I'd always try to stay even keel. So I, I didn't expect much of it. Uh, much, you know, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't expect much to come of it. And, man, later that night, uh, I was I was on the way back, on the RV. I was on the way back to Hattiesburg from Stark. Mm -hmm. Get a call. And so I recognized the, uh, the, the, the UMC prefix. Uh, can't remember it was nine something, and so I go like, "Wait, this is UMC." Mm -hmm. So I call, ask the phone, say, "Hello." The lady says, "Uh, Mr. Miles, this is so and so and so from uh from 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 UMMC. Uh, we've got a kidney match for you. If you if you still want a kidney, and I'm like, <laughs> if I still want a kidney, I'm like." A kid. But immediately fear set in because I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking they're gonna say, okay, we need you to get to Jackson, mm -hmm. like right now. And I don't have my, you know, I'm riding with some, I'm 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 riding on an RV with with several people headed back to Hattiesburg. And I tell the lady, I say, okay, I'm 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 on the way back to Hattiesburg now on an RV. And she said, oh, that's fine. She said, can you, she said, do you think you can get here by 8 a.m.? I said, oh, yeah, I can get here by 8 a.m. So my son was on the RV with me. I said, hey, son, you're going to go to sleep because I need you to drive mm -hmm. me to, 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 uh, to uh, Jackson. And so get there, get to Jackson. Um, 
and discover that Kendrick was a perfect match wow. for, you know, for me. It was a long shot. I didn't want to get myself up too high for fear of a letdown, but it was it was not a letdown. So uh, get there, and then and then after talking to uh, Kendrick's mom, Adrian, uh, you know we 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 you know we we laugh about it now. She like she was like I was like this Joker. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he act like you. Yeah, like he didn't he didn't want to kid me. And I was like Adrian, I didn't I just I just didn't know it worked like that. I didn't know, but what happened was. She didn't know her son was a donor either, right. and so she was there at the hospital, and and some people were coming up to her, and people from uh, Mora mm-hmm. in Hattiesburg approached her about, you know, her son was a donor, and she was like, well, she's like, well, can this wait? They said, well, ma'am, it, 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 it really can't. Time is of the essence. We have to harvest those organs, and mm-hmm. and 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 she. And they asked her, "Do you know anyone who might need an organ?" Well, we had just had a program at church where they had me as a as a, uh, you know, they they announced my need for mm-hmm. a kidney, and she was just at that the one. She said, "I think my minister of music." Uh, needs a kidney or something like that. You know, she's just, like, just in that, like, she's up there the same day her son, she lost her son, mm-hmm. and she thinks about, you know, me, and uh, which I'm f- forever grateful to her for that. And um, and so that's how they end up, that's how she ends up calling me because she needs, she needs to give them, they need permission to mm-hmm. to do to have access to, to my records to right. test and all that and all that good stuff. And so that's how that happened. And um it's 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 unreal how, you know, how her how she thought about me at that time. And uh yeah. you know, when when she had just lost her son. And every time I hear you tell this story, you know, I can see out of everything you've been through, how your faith, being at church at that time, you know, pretty much saved your life. Yeah. And, you know, you could have been anywhere else, but at that service, when praying for that young man and his family and everything, but in that moment, right. you know, being at that service and doing what you always do, got you a kidney. So um, I'm always proud to hear you share that story. And I, and I would imagine the, the people that's tuned in you know, it's a pretty touching and emotional story. But again, you needed that organ to live. Yeah. And you know, that young man saved your life. And that's another thing that we have to talk about is we need more people to donate their organs. Absolutely. Um, you know, I needed one, you needed one, and there are several other people out here that may need a kidney or, you know, a- anything that they can donate. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. So that's an important thing. And I thank you again for sharing that story. I know it's something that you probably shared 25 times since you got that kidney, but I'm always, personally, I'm always glad to hear it. Yeah, I'm, and all, I'm always happy to share it. And can, can I share one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is this is just, as my past used to say, this is for free. I'm not going to charge you for this. <laughs> um, I was not a kidney donor. Every time they would ask me when I got my license and stuff, I'd be like, mm, uh, no thanks. <clears throat> so um, I have my license, driver's license in my, in my pocket right now. I went to get my driver's license uh, renewed. And um, this, was, this is when I needed a kidney. Mm-hmm. And the, the lady asked me if I wanted to be a donor. And... Immediately, I said no, like I, you know, the way I always did, and it dawned on me, like Mike, like you need, you need an organ, like you mm-hmm. need for people who are asked that question to so say yeah. yes. Correct. Why are you saying no? Right. You need an organ, and I turned around and said, "Ma'am, yes." 
I will be a donor. Mm -hmm. That was on August 30th, 2015. I got my kidney on September wow. 13th, 2015. Wow. So um, I, just, I just believe that that was a pivotal part of opening that door, yeah. um, my willingness to give to somebody else, give to somebody else, yeah. yeah. And a lot of people don't realize, even though you needed an organ, when you pass, you can still donate things to other people, like your eyes or yes. your skin, yes. um, other things in your body that uh, other somebody else might could use. So even if you're going through kidney failure, you still can be an organ donor. Uh, right. When you pass, you can donate something to somebody else. Because, again, you needed that organ to keep your life healthy and extended. So why not do it for somebody else? Absolutely right. Yeah. Well, Mike, uh, I know we're getting ready to wrap up, but I saw you on Facebook recently. You've been you know, traveling and promoting something. I mean, last yes, time sir. I talked to you, um, you said you were in the process of writing a book and listening to your story. You need it to get some things off of your chest and, um, you know, talking about that depression you had been through, uh, sometimes just writing it helps mm -hmm. and talking about your story. So I'll let you promote your new book and tell yes, people sir. where they can get it. All of this, all of what I shared and more is, is in this book. Uh, Uprooted was uh, written, I was compelled to write this book um, as a testimony to how God is able to uproot deeply rooted habits and hang-ups that you might have had all your life, um, and he's able to replant you. And so that's what I tried to do in this book, um, entitled Uprooted. Uprooted, my, my, my website is actually under construction or whatever you call it. Yeah. Um, but people can, if, 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 if you want to copy this book, you can email me. My email address is uprootedbook2022 because I wrote the book in 2022. It's, it's published in 2023. I, I, I finished it in 2022. So again, it's uprootedbook2022 at gmail.com. And if you email me there, I can get you a signed copy yeah. of uh, Uprooted. Because yeah. this, this is actually your signed copy. Oh, showing off. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's again that's uprooted book twenty twenty two at gmail dot com. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, man, for Absolutely. continuing to be an advocate for kidney patients and dialysis and the courage to share your story. You oh, know, man. you you and I have been through this and I can imagine you've had people come up to you and say, Man, I'm going through that too. I just don't tell a lot of people. But yeah. Uh, for us to sit here on this platform and for you to continue to share your story, that's powerful because I'm not saying other people are weak because they don't do it. I understand it. For years, I couldn't yeah. do it. I didn't feel comfortable enough to share what I had been through, but the courage that you have to sit down and uh, speak with me and on other platforms, I greatly appreciate you for that. Man, and, man, my um, pleasure. You know, my pleasure. I uh, thank you for accepting the invitation. Yes, uh, so I'll let you... Uh, any advice that you have to anybody out there that's going through it, they have a family member that's going through it, any advice that you would like to give them at this point? Yes. Um, I don't know if I shared this here, but um, counseling played a part in like saving my life. You don't understand how having someone to talk to having a scheduled time to release all of what you're going through um, can do. Uh, church and prayer is, is, is necessary. Um, but God also has given us, it's, 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 it's as simple as if you break your leg, you can go see a doctor. Yeah. A lot of times we're broken mentally mm -hmm. and we need, and, and there are people trained 
to help you through that, um, who who know exercise and things that can help you get better. And so I I'm a I'm a huge advocate for 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 counseling um, and just talking to talking to somebody because keeping it to yourself and trying to do it alone um, is harder. It's just harder, and uh, so that's that's what's on my heart to share. Just yeah. get some help, you know. Talk to somebody. Yeah, absolutely, Ron. Mike, we thank you so much. We'll be continuing to work with you and pray for you and support you in anything that you're doing. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. You know, we since I met you last year, you know, we've communicated on several different things, but um, any way that we can help you, or any way I can help you, um, I appreciate you and I thank you and. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. You know, that will do it for this week's edition of the Mississippi Kidney Foundation Kidney Care Podcast. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you next time.